like we're going away at this this summer and we have pre-recorded our podcast we have like all the content planned and we're just going to take a two and a half week break that's good we're going to concentrate on our, our relationship have really Connection. nice rosé lunches and have sex every single day are you having sex every day right now Welcome, everyone, back to the School of Greatness podcast. We've got an incredible couple on today. We've got Lauren Everett, sometimes Bostic, Michael Bostic in the house. Good to see you guys. Thank you, How brother. You doing? It's been a while. Good to see you. Thanks excited for having about us. This. So and excited. This is all about sex and love and marriage and masturbation and everything, right? <laughs> Perfect. Isn't that everything <laughs> right, you guys are right talking about? Right in our about? wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah, so Perfect, so right? Perfect. Lubrication. No, lubrication. All of it. Everything. Orgies. Everything. Do you guys do orgies too? We don't. We have not done that yet. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, he just sees a yet. Yeah, <laughs> listen, we always leave. You, you get There's room for improvement. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> now, how long have you guys been married? We have been married. Lucy, you're going to get me in trouble. We've been married three years, but we have known each other since we were 12. 12 years old San Diego San Diego but we haven't been together that long like it wasn't one of those situations where it was like high school sweetheart we were together from if you want to call it 12 to 15 broke up got back together at 23 and 22 20 excuse me went into business together when we were probably 28 Mm -hmm. and the rest is history you were dating at 22 yes you dated in high school for a little bit no, hooked up. We did the whole... Played th- around. Three years. We did the whole like kid thing, you know, go to the movies, make out, run around. And then in high school, we both had different relationships, different boyfriends, different girlfriends. And uh, you were at the same school. Same school. Yes. Yeah, always the same school. And then both went to college, had our own unique experiences, some more than, <laughs> some more than others. Um, and then when we got back, we just reconnected. And I always tell everybody, Lauren's just been chasing me for a really long time. Oh, yeah. snap. Yeah. Whatever. Who's older? Um, I'm same older. age. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm same old. grade. A few months. But, yeah. 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 A few months. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I was pursuing her for a long time. <laughs> you were pursuing her for a long time. I was. Time. It was always... In college, she was in another relationship or no? She, yes, we both were. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I would say I had very surface relationships for a long time. And for a long time, I was like, what's, maybe there's an issue with me. I think I knew very early on, and I know this sounds corny now, but I think it's true because we're married, um, that I knew what I wanted in Lauren early on. And so a lot of those relationships that followed, unfortunately, kind of suffered the brunt of that because I was never fully mm-hmm. in them. I was just kind of doing my, my thing and holding out for, not like desperately, just sitting around doing like, I knew that this is what I would want in a woman for a marriage or a life partner and so some of those other relationships kind of let's say let's use the term were for fun sure sure uh, that makes recreational. sense recreational what yeah. were the things you wanted in a, in a long term relationship committed something that's always attracted me to Lauren is she's extremely like if I wasn't in the picture she's completely self-dependent or she's self-sufficient she's driven um, she's motivated she pushes me she holds me accountable mm. um, I think that I was in a lot of situations where I was kind of running the show and kind of trucking yeah, yeah. over my partner and it I need exciting. No, it wasn't fulfilling probably in that sense. I'm very attracted to strong women. Wow. His mom's a very <clears throat> strong woman too. Mm. <laughs> very strong. That's cool. And what attracted, uh, Michael to you? I, he was a Michael had to no, chase me a little bit. No, he's <laughs> definitely not, not a pushover. pushover. Yeah, this guy's a boss. He, yeah. Michael is very much like the, the logical business side yeah. to my creative, sometimes emotional side. He really balances me out. But what I think is most interesting about Michael is a lot of people, when they see me, they see blonde, fake boobs and immediately get judged. Of there's course. there's a lot more. I mean, as people, we're just very, very complex. And I think Michael's always been able to see my full potential. Mm. When I came to him 10 years ago and said, I want to launch a blog, instead of laughing at me, and this is 10 years ago, so you know this is a long sure, time. Sure. A lot of people laughed and said, how are you going to monetize? This doesn't make sense. He immediately believed in me. And even more than believing me, he pushed me to execute mm-hmm. and really saw the full potential of what the Skinny Confidential could be. And he's always seen that. And I think that that's really interesting. That's cool. Instead of just looking at the surface. Well, I, I think like we were talking earlier and I think the most interesting people is when you, you think you, you're getting something and it turns out to be completely different mm-hmm. and it com- turns out to be deeper. 
but not only for Lauren, I would push anybody that wants to break past the status quo and do things differently on their terms. I would, I think that that is the most exciting thing about life is that you can do things differently and you can break status quos and you can break mm-hmm. barriers and do things on your own terms. Um, so when she told me that, it's not that I fully, I didn't understand where the blog space or influencer space or podcast space was going. I just saw her potential wow. to do something different. That's pretty cool. So you always inspired her or just at least said, go for it. Like, I believe in you. You should do this. I would. You didn't question or doubt her. No, and but I think I'd, I would give anybody that message mm-hmm. that is looking to push against the norms, right? Like everything I've ever done in my own life has been something that somebody somewhere said I couldn't do, and I think that's what makes it interesting. I don't, you know, I don't think us as human beings are meant for singular purpose. I think we're meant to push against barriers, and and I think that's why we've evolved past every other species on this planet. Yeah. Well, what I like about what you said is, you know, your show Skinny Confidential on the outside of the surface might people might think you talk about you know big boobs and i don't know sex and lubrication or whatever it is the main things that people think about but then you dive into personal development and growth and inspiration and philosophy and spirituality you talk about the deeper things as well it's it's a whole it it represents my entire life i've my whole life people have looked at me and wanted to put me in this box And, you know, so many people talk about feminism and they're marching and being a feminist is also looking at people and being like, okay, just because they don't fit into my box, Mm -hmm. that's okay. Like, I just think it's about empowering women, whatever they look like or however they're judged. I think that sometimes with social media, you can immediately judge a book by its cover. Instantly. Instantly. And with my brand, it's pink, it's loud, it's flamboyant, it's in your face. But I hope that when someone comes and consumes it, it provides them with so many tangible takeaways. And I love when you're on your stories and you're just like, I'm listening to this podcast, I'm reading this book, check out this new book. And you show people a side of you. It's like, wow, you're not just someone who's talking about you know makeup or whatever by itself. You're really diving into something to make you better. I am constantly learning. I it's don't inspiring. take one second of my day to not be learning. That, when I walk to coffee every morning, it's a five minute walk. And I'm listening to a podcast. It's amazing. I'm listening to an audio book when I'm in the car. I'm constantly learning and wanting to be better. And I think that's what my whole brand is about. It's like being the best version of yourself, but on your own terms, mm. whatever that looks like. Unapologetic. Yes, yeah. totally unapologetic. When did you guys know that you were the right match for each other? What was it about Michael and what was it about Lauren where you guys were like, this is my right match? It's hard to it's hard to put it into words, right? Um, I always make the joke that, you know, I was 12, she was 13, we said a couple months separated, and she showed up in sixth grade and she was a fully developed woman. Ah. And I, that was like, whoa. Um, but well, over time... Spiritually, <laughs> pers- yeah, like, personality, physically... I had huge moves. <laughs> really? I was... As a 13-year-old. She yeah, was I was developed at 13. Developed, it was weird. And I said to my sixth grade girlfriend, listen, we're finished. We're done. I have to go over oh, here. Man. Um, but no, I think like I o- I've i always been attracted, like I said, to Lauren's drive, to her ambition. I think she's a very deep thinker. A lot of, and it's not what you expect on the surface, yeah. right? Like, like you said, I recognized that very early on. I was very attracted to it. And if it comes with all the other great things that she <laughs> comes with, then, then that's an added benefit. Um, but Lauren's somebody like I always joke around. Frank Sinatra says that you shouldn't go on a date with, like, when you go on a date with a woman, it shouldn't be a staring contest. And what I always found with Lauren is there was really, really deep conversations. It was never surface. It was like diving into what do you want for your future? What does your family want? Like, how can we help other people? Mm. Um, how can we, you know, this book about history, what do you think was going through these people's minds? And it's just, wow. She'll ask you those questions. Yeah. I think we both ask each other those questions and push. And I think, like you said, um, we like to, I, I, we like the, we're in on the joke. We like the idea that maybe we present something some way but it's 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 deeper it's different we've had yeah. many amazing conversations yourself included robert green mm-hmm. um, a lot of these people that come on the podcast it's not just sex and relationships it's yeah. really like what is going on in the human mind how do we understand ourselves a little better how do we understand how to be vulnerable in a, in a space that's not always vulnerable yeah. um, all those things and it's even like the name the skinny confidential people automatically think skinny is a negative word mm-hmm. the blog was built on getting the juice like let's go deeper let's get the juice yeah. get the skinny so it's like everything sort of sure, has to sure. do with like it, it almost like tricks you into thinking like wait am i judging this co- like cover before i'm reading it i, ca- I kind of get off on it it's important <laughs> to have people 
really question their judgments. We're all guilty of it, you know, right? I'm guilty of it. You, you, you meet somebody, you think they're going to be a certain way. And I think what we try to do on the show is say, wait a minute, you may not agree with this perspective or this way of life, but at least understand it a little bit more and mm-hmm. be open to what that person's individual experience could be. Yeah, We just we just had um, the highest paid legal sex worker on, on the podcast. And I saw that. I saw you guys talk about this. Flew yeah. to the People, Bunny Ranch. Did it how was there. that? Amazing. Interesting. How much does this woman make a year? She was... I don't want to quote, but she is going to retire in two years. She said, "How old is she? She can make up to thirty-five grand a night." Yeah. What? Weekend. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what is that? Once every few months, though, maybe. I don't think so. She has clients wow. booked out. She's very popular. Um, How old is she? She's uh, probably our age, maybe about twenty-seven. I think twenty-eight. Yeah, she's young. Yeah. You guys she's young. Twenty-eight. Oh, no, 30, 33. 33. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was like, man, our age, I'm like 36. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of like get face blindness yeah, after yeah, a while and course. you lose between, yeah. like I know when someone 28 to 38, yeah. It's like that was such a cool interview though for the platform because oh. it's like, it, that's what it's about. It's about not putting people in a box and mm-hmm. hearing their story and seeing where they're coming from and instead of judging, having empathy and, and even above empathy, uh, understanding and actually mm. putting yourself in their shoes and being like, wait, I, I find that so interesting. It's like challenging yourself yeah. to not be so judgmental. The most interesting feedback we got from that one was people thought that she was going to be a certain way, mm-hmm. right? You, you think legal sex worker, you're thinking what you've seen in the movies. But when she presents herself, she's extremely educated, wow. well-spoken. She's a deep thinker, deep reader. And you start to hear and you're like, whoa, I didn't realize that this person chose this life. It's on their terms. They said th- they enjoy it. Or they whatever. enjoy it. It's they their have thing. boundaries. Mm-hmm. They have certain things. And uh, they don't. You don't make thirty-five grand a night if you're not intelligent, working on yourself, or at least you don't do it consistently. Right. Maybe you get something one in a, once in a while, but not consistently. I mean, one of her favorite books is Robert Greene, The Forty Eight Laws. <clears throat> That's great. So you know that that I mean yeah. that just tells you a lot about wow. the whole situation. Now, is she, I don't know anything about her. Is she like super attractive in your mind or is she more like, wow, she just got a whole package of I think that she definitely is. She's very pretty and I think she appeals to, like I think men like love her. She's very pretty. She's very well spoken. Mm. Um, Yeah, I think she definitely has a clientele. I'll tell you that. And they're reoccurring clientele. What I found the most interesting about it is what you think most people, what most men and women would be going to her for is right sex but they want to talk me listen mm-hmm. to they want connection Isn't that hilarious they want these they want a deep connection they want to be heard and so she provides a lot of that she's like listen the act of sex it takes five minutes yeah remember, for most so of these guys, yeah. actually it's averaging two minutes no way <laughs> yeah is that because, what she said? Well, they're probably yeah. so, they probably feel so open after 45 minutes of being able to finally say what they want to say mm-hmm. that their wife or whoever is not listening to or they don't feel like they're being listened to and then they feel so open and vulnerable they're like You know, it's so easy at that point. It's wild. One of the things we dove into is like, who is the typical clientele? And it's like, we have an image in our head of who we think that would be. And it's completely different than what what you would think. Who who is it? It's that, like I said, it's that person that's craving connection. Maybe it's a widower that's, that's lost his wife. Maybe it's somebody who's uh, handicapped. Maybe it's a disabled person who can't necessarily, um, who's struggling finding sex. Mm. Um, Maybe it's just somebody that doesn't feel they're being heard in their current relationship. It was really, it wasn't this like kind of seedy guy that's out for a party on a a bachelor party looking to get laid. It it wasn't that. Wow. Fascinating. Super interesting. She also said that there was this man that came in and his wife had cervical cancer. So she actually couldn't have sex with him. And so the wife was the one that actually facilitated the whole thing. Yeah. And so, you know, you start to look at these things from different eyes and different goggles and it's, it, it just starts to become really amazing because yeah. you know it's like it just takes the judgment out of it wow yeah what do you feel like you guys get judged for the most Ooh. Hmm. i think that let me pull out my <laughs> scroll. Have a, let me pull my scroll. um i think with my community especially like the blog and the instagram i think that people understand me now i, I don't mm-hmm. i don't get a lot of hate because i feel like they know i'm gonna be me i'm gonna do me whatever that looks like and you should do you, whatever that looks like. Wow. So I don't get a ton it's, of hate. It's something that I honestly, I was thinking about it when, when she was speaking. It's it's something I don't put a lot of thought into, really. I, I'm sure that there's judgment happening. Um, but I think, I've, I feel like 
I don't pay attention to, listen, I, I hope that everybody likes what we're doing and identifies with, but I sure. also know that not everybody is. And like, you're going to see this bright pink couple that says the skinny confidential. You wear pink they, too? You no, know, but it's the, the cover art's going to be pink <laughs> and they're going to, they're going to think a certain thing. Yeah. But to me, like I said, Lauren and I are in on the joke. I'm looking for people with depth, right? I'm looking for people that aren't going to be judging what's based on the surface. I think if we, as a society, if we start to do that a little bit more, one, maybe you'll understand people's perspective. Two, we can get into a place where it's not just so much like you're wrong, I'm right. It's more of like a conversation, dialogue, understanding. So I just don't put yeah. a lot of thought into like who is I just feel like me. I have a thermometer of energy every single day and I am going to allocate that energy towards things that are positive and productive mm-hmm. and to sit there and give in to the energy of someone not liking me is a waste of time. I'm not for everyone. I know that mm-hmm. and I'm fine with that. Yeah. How do you guys find uh, a, either a balance or a structure for being married and working get together at the same time? You guys, have a, you guys have a podcast together and you know, you're know you both running businesses separate and together. It sounds like there's some sharing of sure. effort and support. So how do you keep love life and sex and intimacy strong when we're all three obsessive over our mission and our work? I'm assuming you guys are probably thinking about it all the time. So how do you shut down to really connect? It's really hard. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's an easy thing. And how it's long seamless. have you been together too? How We've many? been together now. For, we were we were dating ten, for six ten, years. Ten, and engaged, 11 years? Yeah, 10, ten, 11 years. 10 years total. Married three, four. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it's hard. really hard. Yeah. There's one thing that I think is the foundation of it. We're both committed to the same vision. It's so important it, when you're in a relationship that you're committed to the same vision. Because if you're not on mm. the same page with that... It's, yes. And it, it can't just be goals. It needs to be working backwards and having strategic systems to get to the goals. And you you have to sort of be committed to that. So Michael has his business, Dear Media, which is the podcast network. I have the Skinny Confidential, which is like the creative. And then together we have the podcast. So his and hers podcast, right? The, the him and her podcast. Him and her podcast, yeah. And I think it's, we've turned it into something fun and playful with the podcast, but at the same time, when it's time to sit down and do work, it's time to sit down and do work. Mm-hmm. And we have to put that aside for a while. It was Michael coming into bed at 1130 at night and me ready to wind down and get my cortisol down and read my book and him wanting to talk about things like numbers. And that is just not my personality. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, when I'm in, call me for that. Yeah, yeah. you got to have like a boundary. So I said, you know, let's stop talking about business at this time and obviously we've fucked up multiple times yeah, sure, sure. but the boundary is there and and we're we're it's something we're working on i always say it's like a dance i'll give you the flip side of that i think lauren answered that question really well but i'll give you the flip side i have a lot of young friends that are starting to get in relationships and they want to talk business mm. and their significant others saying i'm never going to talk about that and so the flip side of that is you don't want to just because there's t- there's a time and a place to understand when it's time to turn on and off, but you also don't want to be deprived where you can't have these conversations with your significant Ever. other, the person that you're with all the time. I think it would be extremely limiting and you know, and also impactful to our relationship if s- some of those times when we're at dinner and I want to talk business with my wife, if I couldn't, like if I felt limited and then I got to go outside for that, right? I think it's important to understand, okay, what's the long-term vision? Yes, it's time to turn on and off. Um, communication is lubrication. Like we say, mm-hmm. it's important to have these conversations, yeah. but then it's time to respect. If she says, listen, today's really not the time. Fine. But then when is don't just, yeah, yeah. don't just shut a portion of your life off or an interest of your life off. Like we're going away this, this summer and we have pre-recorded our podcast. We have like all the content planned and we're just going to take a two and a half week break. That's good. Um, Where are you going? We're going to France. Wow. Our favorite. Wow. And I, I said to Michael today, I'm like, we're going to have sex every single day. Like we're, this is like, we're going to concentrate on our, our relationship, have really Connection. nice rosé lunches and have sex every single day. Are you having sex every day right now? No. Every day now? No. 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 And that's the thing that we should. Let's listen, listen, 10 years together too. A couple times a week. Every yeah, day yeah. is like, you know, you got to put that shit in my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that going to be like in 10 years for me. <laughs> Listen, that's the other thing is like when you, well, Lewis, you have time for sex every single day. You're so busy. Well, I don't see her. How, lo- how long have you been in a relationship? Yeah, yeah. How long have you been in a relationship? Five, six, almost, almost six months. But Talk listen, this is important years. for young couples <laughs> or for couples that have been together for a long time. We have to, you have to work at sex. Like you have to put it. We always say on our show, there's so many people, they put their, they put thought into their health, their wellness, uh, their business. But when it comes to their sex life, they just think it's going to solve itself. It's not. People are uncomfortable talking about sex. People think that, you know, you're, if you if you hook up with your wife once a week, she's gonna be satisfied, or vice versa. If you oh. if you excuse my language, if you hook up with your husband or blow him once a month, she's gonna be fine. Like you have to put in the same amount of work into your yeah. sex otherwise life and your relationship. Die. Yes, or otherwise, listen, 
it's it's going to die and people are going to get bored. Go to the bunny ranch. And they're gonna you go know what? We just it. did for my birthday, and this if anyone's out there and they're list, like they want to spice it up with their husband or their their significant other, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, whatever. We decided to do sexy stranger, and it was recommended by Sex with Emily. Oh, and yeah, basically, you dress <laughs> up as a stranger. So I was, I think I was Ivanka, and I was a Russian working girl. Wow. I did like the short black wig, got the, all the makeup done, um, tight black dress with the trench coat and no underwear the whole thing and I did that we did that on my birthday and that's you know that's a really fun way to spice up your sex life we met at a bar he was he oh, could have you know, he could have tried a little harder let's be honest like he was like a cowboy on, yeah. or she something. had like a whole team come in with a cost like oh, she had a whole wardrobe squad. Yeah. it's just you like I live with some gel in my hair yeah, I had some like leather pants on and like a cowboy hat or something but you also you could have worked harder that. we kind of fucked it up because we showed up First of all, for anyone that wants to do Sexy Stranger, you gotta, you actually, you have to include the pickup part. We um, messed up because we escalated it to I'll meet you at dinner. Uh-huh. And so it took like the, the pickup and the do stranger a bar. part away. So do a hotel we're bar. going to redo it and do like a, a bar connection. Yeah, but just doing those kind up. of things Yeah, you got to pick her up. Exactly. Adding toys to the bedroom, you know, adding lube to the bedroom, just having fun with it and like never letting it get boring. You got to, you got to keep it spicy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, this is off topic. <laughs> excuse me if I'm asking a personal question to your No, wife. you can ask anything. Because you posted that you were having uh, breast implants like last year, six yeah. months ago or something, right? Yeah. And you were posting about it publicly. The whole thing. And I was like, hey, I hope you're healing okay. Like, did you get a breast reduction or something? And you were like, no, they're bigger or something. They're bigger, right? yes. But didn't you already have like large breasts? Okay, so uh, yeah, I had pretty. I had a B cup when I was when I was like in sixth grade, which oh, is I pretty. Thought, I thought you were talking like a double D, no, like no, no. You're developed. Here. No, yeah. pretty developed though. No, she was developed. Then she well, she yeah. got the boob job before, but it's like, uh, over I got time, the boob job in uh, right out of high school. Okay, 19, I'm the type of person if I want something, I figure out a way to make it happen. So yeah. when I was in you high school, money, I made I made my money. <laughs> I worked at you know the clothing the clothing store, the tanning bed, whatever I had to do. I made the money. The second I graduated, I got boobs, and then after ten years. It was time to redo them. So I went and got new ones and I decided to bring my audience on the whole journey. I just feel like with social media, there's so many women getting so many things done, which is their own prerogative. But for me and my audience, I wanted to be transparent and show Mm -hmm. the entire journey. And again, I'm not telling anyone to get breast implants. I'm saying this is my journey. Like if you can take any tips or tricks away from this for your own, great. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, leave it. Um, So the boob job was... uh, was It's interesting. I've seen a lot of women who who are showcasing them getting their boobs out. Yes. Like this is like explanting. That what it's called? Yes. It's very popular. And so now they're all like, well, my health is horrible for the last five years and I didn't know why. And so I'm explanting. And I have not had one Yeah. There's problem. some people that have issues. Some people that yes. don't, right? I've, I've heard a lot of people do have issues. I think again, it goes back to just knowing yourself, knowing your own body and yeah. everyone's different. Yeah. And if you're feeling complications that you can't figure out what it is, then maybe you would take a second look at it. I haven't had one complication. That's great. Yeah, my awesome. doctor was great. And we were joking on here when you said, is what's is there anything off topic? And we said, I think at this point, we've literally, I don't you know what else. about it publicly, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, I don't know what, and I, I also think that for people that are thinking about being public people, it's, it's better you control the narrative than give the narrative to somebody else, right? And like, we're starting with the internet now, with podcasts, with YouTube, with social. Like, this, is, this has been one of the only times in history where a public person or a non-public person can get on and completely control their narrative. It's not, you know, think about the celebrity space. Um, we just had Jessica Alba on and I said, what's been the change since you've been able to have your own social, your own Twitter, and address what a paparazzi or an article would say immediately? These things what did not say? exist. She said, it's, it's great because it take all the power away. Like there's nobody that can control her narrative anymore. She can answer it the way she wants, the way she sees fit, mm-hmm. how she wants, what she wants. Um, and so I always think it's important for people that are thinking about getting into this space, the public space, what, no matter how big or how small to understand that if you're going to put it out there, put it out there on your terms and don't yeah. let somebody control it for you. Do you feel like, um, <clears throat> do you like that you have your personalities out there publicly or do you wish you'd go back and, and not be so public with your, Everything. I was born an oversharer. I just was, this is the way that I am. This is the perfect platform for you then. My dad was always like rolling his eyes my entire life. I just overshare. It's it's by nature. Mm -hmm. When someone asks me any kind of question, I share. So when my blog first launched... A lot of influencers were blogging about what they wear, what they eat. I was like, no, I want to talk about birth control. I want to talk about camel toes. I want to talk about boob jobs, Botox. I want to talk about suicide. I want to talk about death. I want to talk about all these things that aren't being talked about that are taboo. Nowadays, people are starting, I'm seeing, to start opening up about all these things. Everyone's vulnerable now. Right. 
which right it's like an over vulnerability you know sharing. maybe it just took some time but i just think as as an influencer like for me to be an oversharer it's just my natural personality yeah you shouldn't curate your vulnerability though. Like if you want to be vulnerable, be vulnerable. You know, don't say like, here's a selfie of me and I'm, you know, I'm being so vulnerable and this I feel and then swipe over with a filter. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If you want to, we crave that connection. We crave that human connection, right? When you see somebody being vulnerable, you identify, you see things in yourself. And I think it, creators, influencers are doing themselves a disservice by trying to create that vulnerability. If you're going to be vulnerable, be vulnerable. I think I just speaking about your content, I really fell in love with you as a creator when you opened up about your whole struggle. Mm. It just, it made, it made what you, it took you to a different level yeah. in my opinion as an influencer or a podcaster and just made me really lean into your content. Mm. Yeah. What is it about the relationship that works really well and what doesn't work? Oh, that's such a good question. And do you think if you guys weren't these, you know, in a business together that it would actually be a better relationship? No, I think if I think us being in a biz, I'm an onion. I need a hundred layers and I like 5 million dynamics. I'm a Gemini and I want everything to be intense and chaotic and crazy. And I think having the business adds that other layer. So I a hundred percent, if there wasn't the business relationship, I think I would feel something missing. Really? Just if I'm being honest. Like if Michael had his own like career path that he was driven about and it wasn't anything to do with you. No, I could deal with that. If Michael and was sitting on that. the couch eating popcorn every day and you know twiddling his thumbs i couldn't deal with that and i'm just be, that's just me knowing myself um, i mean we intersect in so many places right with the show and with some of our businesses but what i find the most in, like we can go off like i can go off to jeremy she go off and run her, we have separate offices you come back and there's something to talk about something uh -huh. something changed something's different there's a new goal a new new height to reach what don't you think's working about me <laughs> no but I no, think, no 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 you have to answer the question <laughs> i think that it, no i think that obviously we if you, we would probably not be the textbook thing that a therapist would point to and say, that's how you live a relationship. But uh -huh. I think what I, what Lauren and I find so much interest in is that we can do things on our terms differently than other people would find normal and find success yeah. in our own relationship. Because it works for both it of you. It works for us. And we're not pushing, like, we're not pushing this on anybody else. I'm not, I actually don't think every couple should work together. I think yeah. that could be a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. I think it requires certain discipline, right? Like, we were joking before the show started. I said, as soon, when I put these headphones on, it's like PTSD. <laughs> you get anxiety. <laughs> because yeah. we, these are the headphones we use at home if we need to record our pickups or our intros or an ad spot. And, and you, you know, fight over stuff. Oh. Right? About. Yeah, and throwing it's like, things. It's, really, it's oh, eight o'clock at night. The night before an episode crying. needs to release, and you're exhausted. You don't want to do it. Exhausted. Why are pickups the worst? Like pickups are the intros worst. Intros yeah. and the ad reads because you're just like, I just did three interviews today. I don't want to do the ad reads for next week. I'm exhausted. And ma imagine doing it with your significant other. Oh. But because you, you have to do it, read them together. Yeah. Oh man. I think yeah. we would both be bored with each other if it was. But there are some things that like <laughs> that we don't get along about. He's very impatient. And wants everything now, right away. Now, and go, his thoughts go. are very fast. Whereas I'm the type of person that if I'm thinking about something creative, I need to wrap my head around it. I need to listen to a podcast. I need to listen mm. to a book on Audible or read. It takes me a while. And so we're, we're very different like that. And I don't like when he ups my cortisol in the morning or night. I run fast. <laughs> I run I run hot. She runs cold, right? Like it's if I'm up, I'm going. Sim probably similar to you. She if wants she, to she wants time. Or, I also yeah. had like a very chaotic upbringing and he didn't. And so I think I thrive in chaos, which was serving me until about six months ago. Yeah. Wasn't ser it wasn't stopped serving it me. Help, it doesn't help you get to the next level with peace in your heart. No, it stopped serving me. And so I think that he, although you think he's more chaotic because he's impatient, I'm actually more chaotic. Well, I'm impatient with certain things for sure. Um, my, uh, my time management's not the best. Like if I, I, when, I'm, when I'm ready to move, I'm ready to move. When yeah. I'm ready to work on a project, I'm ready to work on a project. You've I made the decision. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. That's She's still asking. making her decision. It's not always the right decision. <laughs> yeah. But if I make a decision, then... Hey, clarity is better than... Uh -huh. you know, Clarity and being wrong is better than like indecision a lot of the time. Yes. Like waiting for years to make a decision. Yes. You know, there's a time and place for like having strategy and thinking about it for a certain amount of time. But it's like... We've been talking about launching our podcast for three years. Let's do this. Yes. That I don't have book. patience Let's for. Let's go. Yep. You're an executor though. I love to execute. Yes. I feel like... I just don't want to die tomorrow and say, oh, I wish I would have done those... 10 things I wanted to do. Yeah. They and I, I feel like if I like never woke up things. with a rose hangover, I would maybe be more of an executor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an executor, but it just, yeah, like are. I said, it you takes me a while hard. to wrap my head around things. What's the thing um, that you know you can improve on in your personal life that would make the business and your marriage 
a hundred times better. Oh my God. There's so many things that I could improve on. Yeah. I have what's so a, many what's weaknesses. What's a couple key things? One thing that would make a huge shift in your marriage and your business. I think that, and I was listening to your podcast today. We talked about this. I think it's time for me to step up as a CEO mm. and, and not just be creating content every single day. I create content seven days a week. There is not, not one stopped. day I have off for the last 10 years. So I, it's time for me to be able to scale my business. It's like step into the role of CEO, step into the role of really dealing with my finances, step into the role of, you know, taking my product line that's probably launching at the end of this year to the next level. Um, that's been really hard. But then also another layer of that comes with managing a team. I've, I've never been a manager. I was a solopreneur for so it's long. Different lo- it's a different experience. I right? was a horrible employee, oh, the worst you've ever seen in your life. Um, and I, I was a bartender for you know six years while I built the Skinny Confidential, the worst employee. Then I was a solopreneur. And then it's like, wait, now you, to scale, you need a team. And that's been like, I, I've had to really consume a lot of Peter Drucker. <laughs> right, content. right. Let's put it that way. I think, okay. I think, well, I know what it is for me. 100% I know. It's listening more. I'm a problem solver by nature. If, if, if you and I are friends, if you came to me and said, hey, Michael, this is my problem. My default state is to say, okay, how am I going to help Here's you Here's the answer. This? Here's, Here's the answer. Here's what this, we're going to do. This. Exactly. That's my move. That's like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to bring these people in. We're going to talk to this person. We're going to get these resources. I got the guy. I got the girl. I got the, yeah. I'm a fixer, right? Like, that's that's what I try to do. <laughs> and sometimes in a relationship, both in an intimate relationship and a friendship, it's better to just stop and listen and make the person feel heard and hear what they say. And At I least be self-aware. Well, I struggle with it. I think that yeah, it's because good. it's out of my default state. I'll tell you what, it's interesting because I've just been uh, getting into a new relationship in the last five months and I haven't been talking about it publicly. I just announced it today. You guys saw it earlier. Um, And one of the things, when I think about the things I really appreciate about her is that she's just such a good listener because I've been going through a lot of changes in my life personally, professionally and everything and she just listens and I'm like, I don't need anything else. And I'm like, wow, is this what it's like for almost all women in the world? They just want their (laughs) man to listen and not even respond, just to look and listen to you. That's a thought. It was it was like, wow, this is amazing. And maybe I've been, you know, always trying to fix things myself. And I got to take a look at myself because I, I felt how amazing it was to have someone to just listen. I think you should have a listening expert on the podcast and I'll play it while Michael and I are getting ready. <laughs> there you go. Subconsciously. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. You need a listening sleep. expert. Yeah, but listen, like none of us are perfect, right? Like it's it's a practice. Yeah. It's it's something that I'm aware I need to improve on for sure in all my relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's something I just got to work at. Yeah. Okay. So that's the number one thing for you. I think, I, I mean, if I think it was when it, when it pertains to our relationship yeah, and like yeah. how, the, if the question was, how do I, what would be immediate improvement and impact on the relationship? It's that listening. What about in your business? I think again, it goes the same way, right? Like when you managing a team and you're adding people, it's like making them feel heard. Like my biggest thing when I bring anybody onto the dear media team is listen, speak up. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know what feedback, like as the boss, let me know what we could be doing better. That's good. What do you think that, where do you think we can improve? Because maybe I'm operating head in the cloud, looking at a long-term vision, but maybe the, some of the operations that are taking place that worked eight months ago, don't work anymore. Mm -hmm. I need the people that are helping me build those processes and, and build this giant company. I need them to, to voice that up. And I think, um, putting that out there that yes, I'm a listener and also I'm willing to take feedback is extremely important. So I think a lot of human beings in general, I think could get in a lot less trouble if they listen to each other more. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Very Robert green as somebody that talks professionally. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And yours is stepping into more of a CEO role in your business. Yes. And that includes time management on a micro level. The time management thing has been, what's it mean to be a CEO? Is it mean not Snapchatting 24 seven and you know, Instagram stories and, creating as much content, being more intentional about content, batching it so that you can manage your team and do I those think things? I think it means stepping in to the back end of your business and working on your business and not in it every single day. Does it mean probably less Instagram stories? Yeah, sure. Um, for me, it's really important that as I evolve, like people get, in my opinion, I'm sick of myself looking at pictures of myself all the time, which right? is why we launched a podcast. It has nothing to do with the way you look. You don't so, have to wear a new outfit every day no. and post this thing and accessory and makeup or whatever. Yeah. It's just, I just don't see how, and uh, you were talking about this earlier, the bright and shiny is going to work long term. 
the long term is really interesting to me. I have such a vision of how I want to build the brand and the community that I think to do that, I think taking out just the way you like, just the way you look is not enough. It has to have those value that the takeaways all the time, even in the caption on Instagram. It's so, I mean, you know, it's so important. Mm -hmm. What's something you wish you both learned how to do besides the answers you just gave before you met each other? Like what's something you had proved on in your life? Manage money. Manage money. Did you spend your money all the time before you got I together? don't think I've, I have, I've had an attachment to money and I think that that's served me. You've had an attachment? No attachment. And I think it's served me because I went into blogging with literally the intention to provide quality content. That was my intention. And I was bartending and I was broke and I had no money and I was going to school full time, teaching pure bar and Pilates, like living out of my godparents' house. But my intention was just to provide the quality. And for three years, I didn't make one dime and I blogged every single day for seven years. Or excuse me, for three years. Every single day, seven days a week for three years. So I think that that non-attachment to money really helped build the foundation of the brand but I think now, like we talked about the CEO, like it's time to step into the financials and really, you know, get into the nitty gritty. I need to have more of an attachment to money. Mm. I think like speaking of finances, but it kind of talks into this or touches on this question. When I was coming up, I'd say maybe 20 to 25, my first years as an entrepreneur, my focus was on was completely on the wrong things when it came to finances, right? It was on material goals. All of my goals were material focused. Get the car, get, get the, the car, the get the Rolex, watch, yeah. get the get the trip, get the house. I'm glad this get the is over. Get the clothing. And I, I wish more young people could understand how fleeting that stuff is because it mm -hmm. caused me a lot of trouble, right? Because you're, you're in debt constantly or you're whatever. Yeah. Not even necessarily in debt. Like I was, a, I was a solid. I was solid at making money. What I was, what was wrong though, was I was not fulfilled, right? You're going and one day it's like, okay, if I could afford this gold watch one day, everything's going to be great in my life. Um, then you get there and you're like, wait a minute, got it. Move on to the next. If I could afford the, maybe this next brand and you're just constantly chasing things that don't matter. Nobody else cares. Nobody serious cares. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help your family. You're your vision is not in place to help people. And so I wasted a lot of years having the wrong focus in terms of what my business goals were because I was focused on material wealth. Mm -hmm. Now it's funny, you arguably we're more successful than ever, but it's not a focus on material things. It's what, what are we giving back to the community? What, mm -hmm. who are we helping? What are we, what message are we amplifying? Um, what, what team are we built? Like there's, there's yeah. so many other things that provide such greater fulfillment having conversations like these you could strip away any finances around any of the things we're doing now and i just enjoy doing them fulfilled yeah, and enjoy. i want to shout michael out for one second because uh, when we first got together we were very different with money very different like i said i had no attachment he was very materialistic no offense well no it was just, and it was just like material driven and so i think we balanced well, each money, other money, out. Money, yeah money. we I definitely think, balanced each other out but F making a transition from being like that to how he is now wasn't just a snap of the finger. It was so much self work. I have watched him read, you know, Ryan Holiday's The Daily Stoic every single day. I have watched him write in a journal every single day. Wow. His gratefuls every single day. You know, making uh, it, it a thing to wake up every morning at 5 a.m. He has worked on himself for the last, I would say, for the last three years every single day. <clears throat> so it wasn't it wasn't something right. that just changed overnight. What was that quote? I can't remember who it's by, but it's like human beings get in trouble because they set out to find something when you should set out to create yourself, right? It's like something, mm -hmm. something along those lines. And I, and I think where to her point, it's, it's the example that a lot of young men grow up with the car, the watch, mm -hmm. the, the house, the, th the thing. And if more people would talk about like, that's not the answer. Those aren't the things that are going to actually make you happy. They, yes, having basic income needs met and having, being able to pay your bills and provide food for your family. Like, yes, that's going to move the needle and make you happy if you don't have those things. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's not the answer. Yeah. I mean, there, it's nice. It's nice to have nice things. Don't get me wrong. I still have nice things. We still do nice things, but it's, it can't be the, the motivating for, the force in your life. Right, right. Where do you feel the most uh, loved and where do you feel the most pain? in your life? Ooh, that's a good question. Where do I feel the most loved? I feel the most loved when my husband gives me every speck of his attention my, and listens and listens and really? all my five, lo this... all my five lo love languages. My <clears throat> main love language is touch. Lauren takes, you know, you have the five love languages. You haven't touched her once right now. Well, so yeah. Why haven't you touched me? <laughs> YouTube's he's watching. Like, he's like, ah. YouTube. <laughs> 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 uh, no, you, 
I think she she capitalizes all five love languages. Yeah. She says one. all of them. She's like, like all of them are the. I love need everything. Yeah. I need gifts. I need service. Yeah. I need service. touch. Service. It's like that meme. The person's dead on the floor, and they're like, "How much attention do you need?" And it's like all of it. When I want attention from my husband, I want my, his full attention. And I don't. I'm not super needy when it comes to that. I let you do you. I'm super independent. But when I want attention, it's like look out. I want his attention. So that's when I feel most love. When every single speck of your being is on wow. me. So the only way he can love you the most is if he's fully paying attention to you 100% of the time. Gotta, no, not 100% of the time. In the moment we decide that I want attention. I need help. Is anyone out there I need help? <laughs> yeah. I when, when we decide to have like full attention, I want the full attention. Gotcha. So I don't say, like, hey, let's be present in this moment. Yes. Like today gotcha. we were out to lunch and he does this thing where he goes like this. I'll, I'll explain it. He's looking around uh, at, at lunch. Not looking at you. Not even like looking at anything in specific. <laughs> just looking around at the setting and I'm like, let me tell you what here. it's like to date a Gemini or to marry a Gemini. <laughs> the beginning of the lunch starts with, Hey, I'm not going to be able to talk this lunch. I have to work. I'm so far behind. Cool. So I start looking around. Hey, why aren't you paying attention to me? Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So this a lot is... of this is you got to take responsibility as well. When do yes. I feel the most pain? I feel the most pain when I'm in chaos. I have a lot of pain when I'm in chaos. You must have been in pain your whole life. Yeah. Not, you said you like to be in chaos. Yeah. Not my whole life. Um, when I'm really in a chaotic moment gotcha. is when I feel the most in pain, like a real true chaotic moment it triggers me. And I've noticed that now what like the other day I had a, a, a moment where it was triggering and I went to Michael, which I normally don't do and was like, I need you to take this one for me. Wow. And he took it. He took it like a champ. You wow. listened. You were a hundred percent listening. Wow. That's great. Well, I think as a couple, like, feeling it's just i i feel the most love probably when somebody under like it's the little things where you can recognize somebody's in pain and step in and it doesn't necessarily like for me when things are not going right or if i need a moment like i'm a very cerebral person i'll go and i need to take some time by myself i need to get in my own head i need to think it's not that i don't want to be around people it's just it's just the way i process things and when she can recognize that and not hassle me for it because a lot of people want to jump yeah, in and yeah. she just understands like, okay, that's his process. Let him be. And, and letting other people know, like, let him be for a while. Um, and I think when we feel the least of that is when people push, push against us, like the way you are. Right. So if my default state is not being chaotic and I need to be, then it's like trying to bring chaos into that, even though you know that that's going to set me off or, you know, that that's going to upset me. That's when I, that's when it's very difficult. And I think a lot of couples run into issue because they know the buttons they can push, yeah, of course. right? Like I know exactly what's going to set her off. I know what she doesn't like, and I can get there where maybe it would take you a while because you don't necessarily know. It would take me three seconds. She could yeah. do the same to me. And so when, when, when you, when you're in a relationship and you have your significant other pushing those buttons, you know, it's not coming from a place of love. You know, it's coming from a place of, Hey, I want to set this guy off or go off. And so couples need to be cognitive of that. Um, us included yeah. saying, okay, why, like, where is this coming from? Why do I want to set this person off? Why do I want to make them feel bad? So here's a scenario. There's a, a relationship of two people coming together who love each other for two, three, four years, whatever. Uh, and one person says, I want to start a business together with you. What advice would you give to a couple that's been together for a few years that wants to do this and wants to launch something together, start a business together, make money with the same thing together? Put your helmet on. <laughs> what <laughs> advice would, is, would you recommend it for people? Would you say only if you're this type of people? hear the things you really need to look out for or the conversations you need to have about money or about ownership or about, you know, boundaries. Like, what would you say? I would say the first step is self-awareness. You need to be, be so in tune with who you are and how I would say to get there is I do this thing called the morning pages and it's by Julia Childs, the artist way. And basically you wake up every morning and you brain dump onto a piece of paper for three pages, not judging yourself. Mm -hmm. So you just projectile what you're thinking, anything, yep. anything. And, and if that was, you know, the self-awareness talk for three pages every single morning for a month, I would write down what you're committed to. If you're committed to the same, like we talked about earlier goals, then I would sit down with your partner and I would have a list in front of me and I would actually build out a, a strategic future by design, which is like, you set your goals with your partner and you're both committed to the same goals. And then you work backwards with systems of how you're going to get there. And so it's really clear. It, is it turning off your phone at 10 o'clock at night? Is it, you know, I, I just being honest here, I don't like when Michael talks business to me before 9am. I'm not a morning person. I need, I need my mornings to be meditation and 
you know, learning. yeah, learning working from your out. podcast, yeah, yeah. no, working out, getting coffee, whatever that is. I need to like get my head in the game. And because I think of myself and what I'm doing as content is like not a professional athlete, but I want to be able to train at a high level That's all great. the time and to lay the foundation of my day. I need to be cerebral. I need to be, you know, inside. So just really laying that out. Michael and I didn't do that to start and it sort of bit us in the ass later, but then we ended up doing it. Thank God. And I think we're on the same page. So I would just say get on the same page and write it down so you can go back to that and show each. Remember when we said this right here, we wrote it down. I just speak it to you, text it to him, put it on his forehead, tattoo it on his ass, whatever you got to do. This is a longer yeah. answer, so both of you cut me off if it goes too far. <laughs> Please. I've been on the mic before. I can. It's fine to cut me <laughs> off. Um, but I would say the, the first thing is really define like your idea of starting a business together compared to your partner's. Like Ooh. Your idea may be, I want to operate this thing into a $100 million business with 100 team members, and we're going to have this massive office, and we're going to go here, and we're going to be in all these different states or countries, whatever. And your partner's idea might be, hey, we're going to have two or three people. We're going to be able to travel all over the world, and we're going to have fun doing this together, right? So that's important to define just as a starting place of what your actual vision is. Because I think a lot of people think, oh, just start a business. Well, what does that mean? Like, what's that scale? Um, and then I think the second part of that is to really define the roles. Like, what are you doing? What is she or he doing? What, where where do you have veto? Where does she have veto or vice versa? Mm-hmm. Or he and he or she and she? Um, I think all of those things should be talked about in advance because doing business together comes with all of the stress that comes with starting a business yeah. and separate stress than being in a marriage completely separate. And yeah. I don't care what sport you're in, what relationship you're in. The most ex- stressful thing is entrepreneurship and building it's a very business challenging, yeah. because not only is it reliant on your household or not only reliant for your household and your family, but anybody else that you start to impact their families, the, the team you bring on, the people you're reaching. And so you have to carry all of that weight and you have to be willing to do that. A lot of pressure. It's a lot of yeah. pressure. How do you guys manage money conversations for the marriage, for your future, for you know, what do we invest back in the business? What do we invest in buying the shiny toys of the month, you know, versus the vacations? Do you guys have a good uh, relationship with money? Yes. Or do you feel like that is a struggle? Like Her most- money's hers and my money's hers. <laughs> no, we we make our own money separately. And then we have the podcast together, which is our uh, its own entity. Like we created... Um, I want to say this right, an LLC, right? Um, no, we have like a holding company that a holding has company. Di- that has holdings in the different entities. And, and together, is that's it your our holding money. company, or is it's, it the whole everyone? It's our holding. Like so, we Gosh. own it jointly, and then that'll have different you know, brands, different brands, different entities, different companies. sort of like an umbrella. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, so you have Skinny Confidential, that, which is yours. mine. Do you work on that at all? I'm completely. This it's a it's a common misconception that people think that I've been working in it or involved. I to this day have outside of consulting with my wife and having sure. those conversations just as like an advisor would, and she is to me. Um, I'm not in the day to day of Skinny at all, right? Like she has her own manager, she has her own team, she has her own office, she has her own thing. The only thing that intersects is obviously um, I run Dear Media and we have the podcast together, and the podcast is with with Dear Media. Dear Media, gotcha. yeah, yeah, um, and we we host that together. But outside of that, we make you know we have investments together, we have companies together, but we we keep things separate. Like I have a separate company, she has a separate company, and then we have stuff jointly. So you have your own bank accounts. My own bank account. Yep. Since day one. Since, since day one. Since marriage. I've. I mean, i I'm a very independent person, and Michael is too. That's another thing. It's like again that self-awareness we're very very independent like Mm -hmm. i've always wanted to make my own money and have my own thing and even if michael was a multi-gazillionaire it's still really important for me to have my own platform my own money my own thing we have yeah exactly we have have a joint account too yeah we have joint we have joint companies and i think that's another thing not to get too technical here but get with your accountant and sit and sit down and say hey what kind of joint company makes sense you could have a joint account Uh you have joint companies it makes things clean. I mean, listen, hopefully the wheels don't fall off this thing, but if it does, there's no, the, the companies yeah. are, are joint. Right. And so, um, we like to invest just, together. It'd be the same as if you and I were partners, right? Like, and mm-hmm. like the investment, like he'll ask my opinion creatively and I'll ask his opinion more business. And from the numbers standpoint, um, I think that we make a good team when it comes to that. And you know, anyone that's listening, that's hearing this, I just think it's so important. I, my like main advice of all this would be don't settle, mm-hmm. don't For settle relationship. Don't settle because at 30 years old, someone told you you had to be married with kids. Mm. Don't settle because at 35 years old, you know, you want children. You can freeze your eggs or so you can adopt. There's so many options out there. Don't settle for someone who's half ass. 
that's my, obviously my own opinion. But if Michael and I weren't together, I, I really truthfully think that I would be single at this moment. I'm really focused on my business and building that. And, you know, I think that again has to do with the self-awareness. Yeah. Wow. Inspiring. So you guys invest together. You'll pay for like trips together. Or does that come out of all your money? No, no, <laughs> no it depends we what we're doing. Like a, our trip to like, France, listen, we split I it. still like to yeah, take my wife great. to dinner sure. and pick up the, ch- the check and do things. But, uh, but you know, I think what the biggest thing is, is we're not, pu- listen, we try to be responsible with money, invest properly, do all those things that we just outlined, but also we're not putting this huge pressure on finances on mm, the relationship, right? We try to live humbly below our means. We try to, you know, put, save, money, save. Yeah. yeah, but like the same time, like if there is something that my wife and I do spend on, it's experiences, but it's experiences together because I think that's something you take with you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, a material thing, like I said, you, you can wear it, you can have it, you can't take it anywhere. Like the, this, the experiences that we have together can live in here. Yeah, that's great. What, um, what do you see as like the biggest problem that could potentially happen over the next three, five, 10 years? Oh my God. Let me pull out my scroll. There's a million <laughs> things that can happen. I mean, there is like, it could be anything from like, this is like morbid, but it could be anything from deaths to breaking up to divorce to, I mean, you have, you have to understand that life takes you on different directions. I, like I said, it's from the beginning. Like I think we're committed to the same goal, but I've been taught from a very young age. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next month. You just have to really enjoy every second of each other. And right now we're in a really good place. We're best friends. We enjoy building together. And I feel like that's what matters. I mean, we'd love to have kids, but we're not in a rush. We're not, people want to like the second we got married, it was like, when are you having kids? It's crazy, right? I just think that it's, you don't have to conform to what society wants you to do. Everyone is different. And, and, and if that means having kids at 40, like there's, there's lots of different options nowadays. You got to yeah. do what works for you. Yeah. As you put yourself out there as a public person on any scale, the, the larger that scale gets, the more outside opinions come in. You, I don't have to tell you that, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think it, I think the wheels could potentially fall off or become difficult. And you've seen this before with, with many couples. If you let some of those outside voices that don't necessarily know what's actually going on have an impact and opinion on, on your relationship. So what do you guys do to make sure that doesn't happen? In a weird way, it's like we're out there, but we're also very insulated, right? Like we have all these conversations. We understand, okay, that was a, a unique experience, you know, having breakfast and maybe somebody came up and it's super grateful to have that, but you didn't have that before. How do we do that? Okay. Um, you know, having a, our relationship put on display to all these listeners, like, okay, that's interesting. Like, how do we navigate that? It's, it's a unique scenario that not a lot of people understand or relate to because I haven't been through it. And I think that we just have to keep having a dialogue as the, as that that's happening. A lot of the time you'll see a couple where it's like, I'm the, you know, I'm out there. I'm a public, look to Gary V. I'm a public person and we love Gary, but he keeps his family yeah. behind. And I think that's, there's, there's something to be said for that. Yep. Um, for us, we don't have that luxury. So and it'll be interesting. when we have kids, we, I don't know how I'm going to feel. I'm, I'm the type of person, like I'm just going with each day. Like I'm, I'm I don't have a rule book for this. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely 20% of our relationship that's kept off social media, which I find, you know, special to us. What's that? Just when you're in the bedroom? When we're in the bedroom, <laughs> a conversation. <laughs> you're just not no, I mean, I, like, it's not like there's a lot. I mean, on Instagram story, you see 10 minutes of a 24 hour day. Mm. You see a lot of the good stuff. You don't see, we're not snapping while we're fighting. You know what I mean? There's definitely, and he's also a lot of influencers have their husbands or boyfriends as the photographer. He won't take a picture of, I mean, if really? it were going to save my life for him to take a picture, he wouldn't take he a picture. He won't take any photos of you? I would take oh, no. or when you're no, no, listen, wearing an outfit. Right, never. It's always you. Listen, never. I don't lie. I set the bar low yeah. because I knew. You set the bar underground. I didn't want, I'm not oh. a photographer. I don't have any interest in it. I'm not good at it. Um, it's a fight between us, right? Because it's like, get the angle. I can't get it. Yeah. So I would rather bring somebody in that's a professional yeah. have them do it for an hour. Yeah. yeah have them do it um so be- when you're in france will you hire a photographer to take photos of yes you if it's necessary post- or but like listen if it's like hey we're at dinner like snap a few that's that's different mm-hmm. i'm just saying i'm not going mm-hmm. out on set and doing yeah, that i'm not I figuring out you. the lighting um but i think you know that's another thing it's like defining the roles right like if i came in and said hey listen i need you to start looking into the books here and doing all the you know bookkeeping <laughs> here and they should, yeah of course not um <laughs> I'm and these guys, you watch. these guys get in trouble because they set the bar really high in the beginning. Like I can take all your photos, but if I was in that position, listen, that's what she does for a living. I would, it'd be my job. It'd be nonstop. So I had to be taking 10 yeah. minutes a day of Instagram stories, Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? I actually Exhausting. turn the camera on yeah. him a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You do? Yeah. Do you like that? 
I don't have a choice in it, but I don't dislike it. I don't. I don't mind. I don't. I don't need an angle or. A, and I'm. I'm a pretty open book. Yeah. Um, I just snap him in his natural element. You know what I mean? Like I don't. With nothing's like rehear- No, it's just he's being absurd. For instance, when we're packing for a trip, it's like he has the wear that weighs the bag, yeah. and he has to have the twenty things. Just pay the extra five bucks if you're going to wait. No, listen, it's, it's like, not. This it's is not, a whole podcast. It's not the, the five dollars. Yeah. It's I know. that I have to carry these massive bags everywhere. Oh, cares, it's all her cares? stuff. It's yeah. all twenty shoes. Right? Trust yeah. me, it is ridiculous. It just I like to snap him in his natural. There was bags arms. and bags of protein powder the last time, and they all spilled in the suitcase. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to stay fit, stay healthy. Yeah, please. I get it. Want to get out of shape, or you want to be? You know. I don't know. Do I want to be scooping protein powder? Or do I, <laughs> I got to decide. Wow. Okay. <laughs> What's the question you wish she would ask you that she never has asked? Hmm. I don't know about that. Again, I'm going to might need a second for that one. What's the question? I mean, she's asked me everything under the sun at this point. I don't know. What's the question I wish you would ask me? Sometimes I think it would be nice. Listen, because I'm somebody who just trucks and trucks forward. And I, and a lot of that time is even if something's going wrong, my default again is to be like, okay, everything's going to like, I'll find the light in a dark tunnel. Sometimes the question of, Hey, are you all right in all this stuff? Are you okay? Are you, are you super like just I'm those so types used of to questions him being a rock? I never think to ask because a question. He never needs help. He's, yeah. he's the man. Yeah. yeah. He's got it all under control. And yeah. sometimes like the other night we were in New York and we were running around and it was just an exhausting day. And I looked at her for like one of the first times and I just said, I'm fucking exhausted. It's probably the first time she's heard that in a long time. I, I don't even remember the last time I've heard not that. Just, not just physically, but mentally. Like there's just a lot going on. We're, you know, we're doing a lot of different you things. You had like 18 meetings in one day. Yeah. And it's just a lot. It wasn't, it's fine. The, it's just, it's emotionally draining sometimes and you're carrying a lot of weight. And so to have that question sometimes, sometimes this, like, you know, you have your, that we can all have that one strong friend. Maybe you're that strong friend. And because you're, that's your default. Most of the time, people don't take the time to say, wait a minute, are you okay? And it's not that we're not, but it's just nice to have somebody thinking about mm. like, Hey, are you, mm. you know? Yeah. I think so you should always ask, ask that your strongest about. friend. I need to do that more. Always ask. I haven't your necessarily, strongest I've never thought day. about that question, but, but that is where my mind just went. Interesting. Huh? And what, what question was that helpful for you? Yeah, really helpful, actually. This is like therapy, Lewis. <laughs> what question would you do you wish uh, Michael would have ever asked you or ask you more? What do you feel about that? And I'm not going to insert my opinion. Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> I just want, I like when he just asks me a question without trying to like figure out the answer. You know, she, sometimes I just don't want a solution. I just want you to listen. How do you feel about this? Okay, cool. And just saying like, all right. It's really hard for you. Can you do that? Well, I think the thing you could say is, how do you feel about this? And then when you vomit on her or vomit on him, whatever you're saying that he feels like, okay, I need a solution. Then you can say, would you like me to offer feedback or a solution? And if she says no, then say, okay, cool. Anything else? Do you know what I say? Sometimes I say I'm not at request for coaching. That's great. Sometimes I, I don't. want to say something and I'm not a request for coaching. Nope. Sometimes I just want to bitch and sometimes I just want to talk. There you go. And she probably just wants you to touch her and look yeah. her in the eyes while she's doing while it. While I get a gift yeah. with a card. <laughs> while he's sweeping the floor. I'd like a massage. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Maybe some pizza. I saw Jeff Bezos doing this thing where he like had these big mechanical the robots. Hands, the robot arms. That, yeah, I'm, yeah. That's what I'm going to need in order to get all her love languages. <laughs> like 20 arms. Yeah. Yeah. I don't ask for much. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in the world. Yeah. <laughs> what is your quote that you have? It says, I want it all and I'd like it delivered. Yeah. Yeah. That's Why like not? literally on her profile. School of greatness. I'm trying to be the best. I like it. Okay. I like it. <laughs> but if you're willing to work for it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five love languages. Oh all gosh. at once. All at once. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So you guys, uh, where can we find you guys? You can find us at the skinny. Well, you can find me at the skinny confidential. And then my blog is the skinny confidential.com. Yeah, just the, the podcast. And like I said, we're working on a lot of different shows on, on the Dear Media Network and check out, I, mean, I think, 30 female focused shows there. Any of them would be a good place to start. And um, yeah, and I'm just Michael Bostick everywhere, but I don't have as much um, pink content as her. <laughs> <laughs> so. Do you guys have a, uh, an account together too or no? No. Oh, well, I guess we have at TSC podcast. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Just the podcast. The podcast. We've had a lot of. Lewis has been on. Go listen to that episode. Yeah, go listen yeah, to Lewis's episode. We had a good time. We had a good. Yeah. We had a good time on that one. Yeah, Lewis's we episode's kind of took one over, my right? We yeah. had, yeah. Michael took over. We went. We went a little deep. I, I thought I was interviewing you, and then it just flipped. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have you and your new girlfriend on. So you better watch oh, out. And no, I'm going to do the same nuts. thing to you guys. Be nuts. I'll give it another six months, and then I'll have yeah, you guys on. Six months. Yeah. Really. yeah. Okay. Gonna cook for a while. Let her make her list. I know, right? Because right now, man, it's like, you know. 
I've never been in a relationship where I'm like, man, it's just really, really good. Like it's really it's easy. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm almost having like a little PTSD or anxiety from my last relationship. Cause it was like every day it felt like when we were together, I felt like stressed, like something bad was going to happen. Right. Or and I'm not saying I was perfect or it was like, you know, all her fault or something, but I just felt like anxious all the time. And she probably felt the same thing. Right. Um, and man, I just feel like, gosh, I'm like, is something going to happen bad in the future? Like, I don't know. Well, you're used to so, chaos. I'm so used to it. I'm like, this is unbelievable. And it makes me emotional just like when I talk with her because I'm like, I've never felt so much love and like security. I don't know. It's What's her vibe? Is she super business oriented? Like what's her? She's very, she's very driven. She's a lot like you probably where she's got a movie coming out next month. She does TV show five days a week and then she does theater six times a weekend. So she has no days off. Literally. She has to show up somewhere every day. And, um, you guys are on the same page. She's like busy. A, she's, she's very independent and got her own thing. She makes her own money. She just bought her mom a house last month. She's like giving and caring and she doesn't need anything from me. That's the best. She's got, she's had every major like Latin pop star and billionaire offer her planes and this and that and taking her all the world. She's not into any of that, you know? And so she doesn't need it. She could have it easily. And that's what I really appreciate about her. She's just like, I don't know. She's yeah, we crazy just passionate. This conversation like, last she's night. a passionate Latina, but she's also I'm telling you, man, super calm and loving and a great listener. Something so. to be said for these strong women. It's weird. I've never been, but I've also, you know, when I broke up with my, uh, when we broke up last year, I had like a, a month and a half where I was reflecting on my whole life. I was like, okay, who are the, all the women that I've been with and what do they have in common? And I realized, wow, I've never asked myself this. I've always just kind of repeated the pattern of kind of dating the same girls. And I didn't even know why. I was like, why do they all break horribly? You know, they all end horribly. And I had a moment where I was like, oh, my gosh. They all were super beautiful to me. I was very attracted to them sexually. They all had some type of talent or gift that was different than the person before. Like one was a doctor, one was a photographer, a dancer, a singer. It was like always like a t thing that I couldn't do that I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I said, wow, they all have the third thing in common as well, which is none of them believe they're beautiful or talented. Are we recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say that's. I knew you were going to say that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm not putting any of them down or anything. But they, they lacked self-confidence. Yes. And confidence, I think, is what's attracting you so much to. Yeah. Um, it attracted me to them originally because I was like, how do you not see how beautiful you are, how talented you are? These are all my girlfriends, right? And they're all amazing in their own way. And I don't want to, I'm not trying to put anyone down here. You know, I had my insecurities as well. But I reflected on it. And I was like, wow, these are the things they had in common for me that it was like a project for me to help them. I wasn't even consciously thinking about it, but I was like, you got to see how beautiful you are and how talented you are. You're an incredible human being. All my exes are incredible, right, in their own way. But they, for me, I never felt like they were able to get over the hump of like actually truly believing in themselves. Like it didn't matter how many years, how much I tried, how much I said the words, like you're amazing, you're beautiful, like I love Because they have to feel it from within, and that's something that you have to work on on yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, that, you know, they all worked on it at a different level. So, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to put anyone down here, but I felt like I was always growing more in certain ways and in that area and they weren't as much in that area that's probably exhausted. why you're feeling peace though is because that third I one's just, fulfilled third one feels yeah i'm like yeah. wow she's confident and humble she's driven and grateful it's weird and so i'm like also like a little anxious because i'm like is, is something gonna happen wrong that's like in the future like i don't know you just gotta let it be good <laughs> just let it be good and be like just enjoy it and you know life's gonna happen how it happens we talk about this all the time is sometimes like you know if you have a chaotic background or you're looking for something to fall, maybe you're waiting for the wheels to fall yeah, off something. Right. And so it's almost like you're creating that. And Lauren and I have these conversations all the time. Like if something's good, let it be good right now. Don't <laughs> enjoy look, it. enjoy it. And so many of us self-sabotage and ruin good things for no reason. Like if it's good, let it be good and just say it's good. Confidence though, like just from my own experience, confidence is the sexiest thing that you can have in a, in a friend. Mm hmm anything in a husband in a podcaster confidence is like that is for me it's like charisma it's amazing yeah you just want to lean into it's it magnetic yes it's a question we ask a lot of people on our show like 
how do they find confidence? And it's, I still to this day don't know if we've had a definitive answer. How do you define confidence? How do you find confidence? How do you how become do you find a, if you're not confident? I think right? you you create confidence by uh, overcoming all of your emotional fears personally, because I felt like the only way I've become confident is because I embodied everything I was the most afraid of. And I gave myself a game and a challenge. Like when I was a teenager, it was talking to girls. I could not talk to girls to save my life. And I remember just saying, like, I'm sick and tired of feeling so terrified when a girl comes around because I don't know what to say and I'm going to get laughed at and everyone's going to talk about, you know, I build up this story. And then one summer I said, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to a place where no one knows me for a summer. And every time I see someone that I'm attracted to that gives me like butterflies, I'm going to sprint up to them. Not in a creepy way, but I'm going to, if I see them and I'm like, wow, they turn me on, I have to like move my body and just go right up to them and start talking. And it was horrible the first week, first couple of weeks. It was miserable, like so like terrifying. I thought I was going to die until I didn't die until like, okay, a couple of weeks in a girl talked back to me. Until I didn't make a, she didn't laugh at me and run away or whatever. It was like, okay, now we can have a conversation. That gave me so much confidence at the end of that summer just to overcome that emotional fear was creating those moments. And I've done that in so many areas of my life because I was never confident. I was always insecure, always lacked confidence until I created it. So I think for me, that's what's worked is really like diving into those things. Whatever your emotional fears are, create a list. The one that scares you the most, I'm not talking about like spiders or something, but an emotional fear, like write a list down and circle the biggest one and then go do that big one first. That's great advice. I mean, it because makes a lot of sense. Putting yourself in just uncomfortable situations uncomfortable over situations, and over. Over and over again. Because you, when you, when you tackle that, you'll be like, I can do anything. Yeah. I did this with public speaking. I could not speak in front of five people to save my life. I was going to say that my biggest fear in my life for forever was public speaking. And now I speak for a living. Yeah. And I was terrified. I couldn't terrified. speak in front of six people. But it's people. like riding exactly. a bike. You Sweat, rinse shake. and repeat. You yeah. keep putting yourself in the situation over and over and over and over and over until it becomes confident. Normal. Yeah. That's it. Until it becomes like, okay, I'm not stressed out. I'm not sweating my pits right now. You know, I can breathe. And you overcome that fear. So that's how, that's how I've created over the years. And, you know, I went through a lot of, you know, insecurities of earlier in the year because I was getting publicly shamed by my ex, right? So I was, like, publicly getting shamed. And I was, like, that was a big emotional fear. It was, like, lies and rumors being spread about me that I couldn't control or I felt like I was being under attack. But you put, you're putting it, I think you putting it out there and even just saying yeah. that, I mean, that must feel good and liberating in a way. Well, it was also like, okay, all my fears happened where people like betrayed me and people like judged me. And it was like, I never wanted to be, everyone wants to be liked by everyone, right? Sure. And so I was like, okay, wow, my ego had to die so that I could know that I'm still alive and it's okay. I still have friends and family and people love me. And now more people are like following me and love me for who I am. So I think it's a part of like, killing the ego and rebuilding constantly and we need to do to build confidence. That's how I've done. And also just because you're a public person like you, you're not going to do every single thing right all the time. Like no. there's, there's, no, Never. it's crazy sometimes how people <clears throat> get shamed for doing one thing and no one has, it's like, I, we talked about this earlier. It's like they build you up to tear you down. I it's crazy. You, you, no, I mean, no one is perfect. I mean, I'm going to fuck up a million times and I hope that my community can, you know, rally against me and realize no one's perfect. Yeah, I think exactly. I apologize every week on the show. Really? <laughs> I started with the, sorry, I did this, sorry, I did that. I mean, I think, yeah, we're not, we're not professing to be perfect here. We're just sharing, sharing the journey. Yeah. Well, I acknowledge you guys both for sharing the journey because you guys open up in a big way. I mean, just the episode we did alone, I was like, wow, you guys are really that was intense. willing to go there and empower your audience in a big way to inspire them more than the, you know, boobs and makeup and type of conversations. You really open up and you continue to do the work individually and together. And I think it's really important to set that example. You guys are an amazing example of a, a married couple that can be independent and thrive together and not kill each other. That's very, very nice. At least not yet. So, and you seem, you know, you seem like you really admire each other. You really love each other. I'm sure there's complications and challenges like everyone has, but you really have stayed together for 10 years. And I admired you for being able to do that in a world where it's easy to compare to other guys out there, other girls out there. It's easy to say, ah, oh, it's not working. I've got 30 other girls that are hitting me up right now that want me, that aren't creating stress for me, that are just whatever. And same thing for you. Like, I've got guys that just want to listen to me all day long. You know, you won't listen to me. Sure, they want to do more than that. Right, exactly. <laughs>
And um, so I admire the, and, and acknowledge you guys for staying committed to your vision and staying strong even when people may try to tear you down. And I think it's really cool, especially as young 33-year-old couple. It's really inspiring. So Thank praise, you. High praise coming from you. Yeah, and that means a lot. Of of Thank you for having us on your show. Yeah, I've got Thank two you, final questions for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, three truths. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll let Lauren start with the first, you do the second, and then you do the third since okay. the ladies go first. So three truths question is if this was your last day and you could only share three lessons with the world. What would you share? So you get two and you get one. I got three. I, I would three. say, uh, <laughs> create your, you are in charge of your own future. You can create your own future. Okay. And, the, and it, the, the second that you can own that and step into it, your life will become immensely better. Mm -hmm. Design, design your life accordingly. Okay. What about you? I was going to say it's going to start it. You can live life on your own terms. You can and should break the status quo and you don't need to wait for, for you don't need to wait for permission to do mm -hmm. any of that. I like that. Okay. So you get two more now. I three. get two more? Well, he just did three, so you get two more now. My, Mine kind of go together as one, though. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> My whole message is do you, be you on your own terms. Um, I think that I feel most empowered and most confident that I can, and my parents always gave me that space to do me whatever that looks like. Mm. And if you're listening to outside influences on how to live your life, I would sit back and I would take a lot of time to reflect. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And then my last one, just to sum up this episode, would be don't settle. Don't settle for mm -hmm. don't settle for mediocrity in any area of your life. You know, your relationship, your business, um, even like doing small things, your, your workouts. Don't settle for mediocrity. Yeah. And don't be willing to throw things away so quickly when they're when they're getting tough mm -hmm. and they're hard. That's, that's good. and I think that's really important for relationships. Relationships are tough really tough. A lot of people are willing to just give up and throw them away without, you know, really taking the time putting work. the work. It, yeah. it, it requires work. Wow. And final question, what's your definition of greatness? I think I kind of answered it. I mean, my my whole thing when I think about the greatest people, it's it's people who have done things on their own terms and have gone against the grain and have <clears> pushed <throat> against society norms and haven't waited for permission, right? There's so many of us that are waiting, okay, well, I'm going to get this degree, I'm going to take this course, and then I'm going to start this business. Like, just get going. Everything that we've done, we just got going. There's no there's no reason or no, there's no certification that we were given to do anything that we're doing. And it, whether success or failure. And I think that if people just stopped waiting and started doing in anything, talking to that girl, starting that business, mm -hmm. getting in shape, uh, I think that is the biggest, th those are the people that I'm the most impressed with. Yeah. I would say getting rid of excuses. It's, you know, the internet's not too saturated. Blogging's not too saturated. Creating content's not too saturated. Mm -hmm. You're not too old. You're not too young. I would say get rid of the excuses and execute. There you go. Double high five. Lord Mike, thank you guys very much. Thanks for <laughs> <having> <laughs> <us>. Appreciate it. <laughs>